Well, at 6.30, we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information, I'm assuming Mr. Eiser has something. Yes, you didn't get my plan the other day. Don't we get a plan from you every day? No, <laughs> but I, I emailed everybody a PDF of a plan. Oh, oh of the, uh, of the uh, Newton Lane thing. We have, well, Middle Street. What oh, was middle, going to be, yeah, what Barry Roberts was proposing. Oh, yeah, mid middle Street to uh, almost East Street to back. Okay. Barry, yes. uh, well, the, uh, what do you call it? That was the one acre lot and then the unbuildable lot behind it? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Okay, so Swazlowski is buying Dion's property. He wanted me to cut out an acre lot because he's going to finance some of it and he, he doesn't want the back piece as part of the mortgage. So we, we cut out the acre for the house. The rest of the land is going to be farmed. His intent, as I'm told, is to put it into APR at some point in the future when he can. I don't, I don't know what, you know, I don't know where he's at with that, but that's what I'm told he's intending to do with it. Okay. And the lot is pre-existing non-conforming in that we don't have enough frontage. We probably, I'm sure we don't have the width required, but I did not uh, lessen any of that. I just added enough land so there's an acre there it's in the aquifer i believe so it's forty thousand square foot lot it's over that so it meets all the zoning there are no uh setback violations so it's the ground next square yeah yeah it can't fit that's the one of the pre-existing conditions that we can't meet so okay i don't have any i, I mean it meets zoning as far as i can from what i can see so any other comments or anybody else on the board Oh, it looks, looks fine. Okay, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. No. Okay, once you get it ready, any one of, any one of Joe, Joe, Bill, or I could sign it, Randy. Okay, I'll get a hold of one of you and get it done. Okay, thank you for getting it to us a couple of days ahead of time. Because uh, we've got a plan this morning that, you know, take a look at it. Well, we got it at 9 o'clock. I just, I didn't I don't get home until later in the afternoon. I haven't had I haven't even looked at it, so it's not going to get a, it's not going to from what I can tell it's not going to get any attention tonight. We're going to get these plans and these kind of conditions at least a couple of days ahead of time. Yeah, well, I'll do the best best I can. Every once in a while, it's last minute, but usually I have a few days so I can get them to you. So I'll okay. try to continue the trend. Yeah, appreciate that one. Thank you. Okay, you are welcome. And that's all that I have for stuff like that. Uh, I do have a question regarding the uh, accessory apartment bylaw. I know that this is not on the agenda or anything, but you guys have been talking in the past about trying to make uh, uh, sure a non-attached non or detached accessory apartment allowable. Is there any headway being made on that one way or the other? Nothing at all has been discussed on that. That was just an idea several months ago and it has not come up again. Okay. And what would it take to get it to come up again? I have no intention of bringing it up. Well, I, I think I, it was. I, 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 I'm against doing it. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. So I, but if somebody I, brings I a petition was, forward. It was said a bit the, in jest, I think, uh, when we were talking about it, when they wanted to put the little house in there on Middle Street. On East Street, um, somebody said that hell, I just convert my old barn into one. You know, but so, I mean, it, it would probably take a petition to bring it in front of us, Randy. Okay, I I support it. Uh, the detached accessory. I have uh, a couple of outbuildings that would lend themselves to being converted to an accessory apartment. So I'm sympathetic from that perspective. Maybe if we limited it to an existing structure. And not new construction, but again, as you see, there's no not much other support for that. Yes, I I see that. And if if it was something that I would was looking at into the future for my property, and I would not be able to do it in an existing structure, it would have to be a new one. So I guess I'll have to get a petition together. <laughs> well, the problem yes, the problem, Randy, is uh, if all of a sudden somebody is hearing this and they come up with a petition, is that they will craft a bylaw that uh, is always difficult to get a petition and you can't change it. So mm -hmm. if there is a sentiment out there, they should come before us 
with at least so we could work it out because yeah yeah I've got fifteen tobacco farms. Uh, they would be student stuffers for sure. <laughs> you could get one accessory apartment in. You get you get nine hundred square feet in any one of them. Uh, yeah. How can oh. you how could you how could you limit it though to existing structures? Isn't that contrary to the uh, due process? <laughs> if, if the law wouldn't apply to everyone. It would just apply to someone that has the benefit of an existing structure on their property. That's true. <clears throat> yeah, we, have and, stayed, we have implied that restriction elsewhere in town, though. Yeah, okay. Well, if I do get ambitious and, and want to petition, I will certainly make sure that I include the board in the process. I, I wouldn't want to try to ramrod it down your throats. So the, um, the woman, Sarah, who was doing the tiny house, did propose an amendment to the, that would have allowed for freestanding accessory apartments. Um, and it, she conceded that her tiny house would not even qualify under that. But that was the idea that, uh, so if you want to see what one looks, I'll try to dig one up and send it to you. Okay, please do. Thank you. Anything else? Not from me. Not for you. Okay. Um, we don't have, let's see, that's all we have for general information. I've got a bunch of things. Okay, you go with yours, and then we'll, we'll go ahead. Maybe, maybe one of yours is mine. We'll see. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we have a request. And I, I sent this around to everyone. Uh, 37 Lawrence Plain Road, the was Southern New England Spice, is now Shaolin Kung Fu Center. They want their sign approved. Yeah. And I sent you a nice color rendering. It's basically uh, three by six, uh, six feet tall. And it's basically the sign that they had on Route 9. He didn't, he didn't state, but I assume it's on both sides. Yes. Yeah, usually a sign is, yeah. But it, it appears to conform. It, I mean, it conforms according to what he's got. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a decent looking sign. I have no issue with it. Yeah, and it's 18 square feet per side. It's, you know, but it's existing. So I have no problem. Well, no, it's not existing. It's, oh, I thought it was the existing Spice Company sign that he was just changing the. I don't know that. Oh, well, okay. he took the sign has been oh. removed, but he's putting it up where the, where the Spice Company sign was. At current site location using existing posts. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. But the, the, the Spice Company sign was conforming. So the, uh, the, the physical fitness gym slash that was proposed initially is now going to be something else? It's no, cool. that was what he originally proposed, a martial arts fitness gym. Yeah. It was a combination of the two, if you would. Or some of both. I mean, I don't know how you want to phrase it exactly. Okay. Any other discussion? I'll make a motion to approve. I would second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Okay, I'll get that off to the building inspector. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, Valley Construction Company is requesting the release of two lots on uh, Colony Drive, which is the one off Shattuck Road. Uh, it's just north of Bayberry. Oh, that's the one. Uh, it was which gave it as if you would, I believe. It was, yes. Do we have anything that says that everything's been built according to specs? I believe we do have a write off, uh, a sign off on that. I don't have the file with me, but I, um, I I'll double check. As long as we have a sign off saying that it's been built to specs, I have no issue releasing lots. If we don't have that, I'm not in favor. So we can make okay. that a condition if you would. Okay, and that's lots two and four. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I won't participate in this one, but. Uh, Someone make a motion to release lots two and four, provided there is. And, and uh, backing up what Jim is saying, uh, 
when I drive by there after a heavy rain, and that's not recently, uh, immediately as you exit Shattuck Road, there's a little dip in the uh, newly constructed road that the water seems to stand. It doesn't go into the detention pond immediately to the south. That's uh, because they're, they're one, the, the detention pond was, everything is sized for uh, the completed paving and they haven't put their finished coat on. Okay. So, so the, uh, the, all the drainage structures are about an inch proud of the- uh, Right, okay. Surface. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, probably explain to our audience what we're doing and uh, especially to the new members regarding the restrictive covenant that we do put on uh, to ensure that the road and everything else, the well, drain. Go ahead, John, why don't they just you, can, you can do it too. Okay, so when someone comes in for a subdivision, certainly the engineer presents the plan and they say they're gonna construct it in a, any manner that has been approved by the planning board. And the planning board wants to be reassured that the construction will go according to the way it's been presented. So the builder has a choice, either can uh, have a performance bond uh, from an insurance company, can pledge a book, pass book, or they can have their lots deeded over to the town of Hadley. And the planning board has the ability to release the lots one or two at a time until the final lot is not released until it's accepted by the town meeting. Did I miss anything? That great explanation. And I, does that acceptance include uh, the DPW of the of the road? Is that or is that only if they're trying to get the road accepted by the town? That's the final DPW was, was one of the final approvals to get the road accepted by the town. Yes. So I will make a motion to approve lots two and four, subject that the town has received, the planning board has received something saying that the subdivision road has been built according to specs. Second. Any other discussion? Uh, do we specify who, who qualifies that? Yes, um, that's all in the subdivision regs. Okay, good. Yeah, so typically, what well, typically the reviewing engineer that reviewed the drainage on a town's behalf, or the one of the, the uh, superintendent of highway, I believe, or the, yeah, the yeah, the DPW director may also be qualified to inspect that. Okay. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Motion, motion passes four zero with one abstain. Um, that was releasing. What's lots two and four? Two and four. Two and four. I had I sent around a, um, I, a copy of the plan to everyone earlier. Yep. Now, yeah, that's got that brook at the back that kind of cuts into the. Well, Mark, uh, the original preliminary plan was twelve lots there, and the uh, the last four lots were eliminated due to potential habitat for the spotted turtle. Yeah, that's what that NHESP, I had to look that up. That was the National Heritage Endangered Species Program. Correct. Uh, we have had a, a couple of requests from the, um, the North Hadley Fire substation and from the Senior Center to conduct a landscape inspection. So we do request verification from, just as with subdivisions, a verification from a professional at the end of construction that the construction has been conducted according to plans. Uh, but we also have a clause that says, um, landscaping has to be installed and verified by the planning board. So we haven't really approached it all that formally in the past. You know, you drive by and it looks good enough, but um, I don't know if we want to delegate someone to take a stroll around the senior center in the North Hadley fire to uh, look at the landscaping. The part, the, Mike Spankenable, Chief Mike Spankenable called me yesterday 
and made a request. He says, you know, how particular are you on the landscaping? I said, well, that depends on what your question is. He said, well, right now the landscaping has been put in, I guess that for some reason it showed, or the landscaping was put in with um, mulch around each tree in the front. And there was a space between the mulches, if you would, that would have to be mowed with either a weed whacker or a lawnmower. And they said, could we take and make the whole front all mulch? I said, yeah, we're not, I said, we're not that fussy. I says, if the trees are put into size, we're more concerned about that and the quantity. I says, how will you put mulch on and little details like that? I, that's whatever is best for the, uh, the, the, the owner. So. But so Jim, the, uh, the front, part of the uh, fire station is kind of on a slope. And if you put all mulch there, it's gonna wash into the street. There's a, a, a fairly, so I think we'd like to see a drawing of it, where and, and what's gonna be done, how much of it, I don't know. It's, I'll get a, I'll get something from Mike to see. I mean, yeah. as far as inspecting, um, I guess I'll, I'll volunteer to look at the senior center and the- uh, I'm happy to look yeah. at as well. And the fire department. You know, I don't, I don't think we wanna to be too lenient on these things. We, we've got a lot of input from the neighbors there. Uh, well, I, I, I am not gonna be the inspector to say it passes or not. They need to get that done by one of the, by a reviewing engineer. Sure. Okay, I'm just saying that as far as requesting that the planning board take a look at it, I will do that. However, they need to get the official okay from the reviewing engineer. So the other thing uh, is we could accept the cert, <clears throat> I think we could accept the certification of the general contractor <clears throat> that the work has, that the landscaping has been installed according to plan. I mean, it's fairly- I'm not, I'm not sure of that because the senior center of general contractor didn't put the uh, senior center of trees in according to plan. Yeah, I guess so. I, w I wouldn't, uh, after the problems we had with uh, the operation in Toronto, I think we want to be a stickler here. The uh, certainly, I've had three calls regarding the height of the arborvitaes on the north side of the uh, of the senior center, so uh, perhaps we got to look at that more closely because the neighbor. I, I I went. I got the decision and I got the plans and I gave them to the to the building inspector slash zoning enforcement officer two weeks ago. I was curious. There was some debate whether it going to be six to eight feet, three or four feet. What would the what did we finally decide? The, the decision. Our decision said that the arbor variety should be three to. Three to four, I forget if it's exactly three to four feet or three foot three to five feet tall. And the spacing according to the plan is about uh four to five foot on center for the arborvitae. And from what I've heard, the, the arborvitae are about 15 inches tall and spaced out way more than four to five feet. I've I've heard that they were pulled up already, but clearly the, the person that was putting them in or the company that was putting them in was trying to make a quick buck. Well, whatever. That's not our problem. Oh, it is. As a taxpayer, it's my problem. Well, that's a separate. <laughs> that's a separate issue. As a planning board, we just. I gotta, understand. I'm being. I'm you know. being kidding. So. So we'd want. Yeah, I, I agree. Probably it's best to have it certified by the same person <clears throat> who is certifying overall. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So, Bill, you are you making that in the form of a motion? Well, you've got the request, Bill? Um, yeah, I do have the request. Um, basically, I got phone calls from these people, so I'm happy to call them back and tell them okay. that tack it on to the um, tack it mm -hmm. on to your overall site approval. Okay. Or site uh, uh, assessment. Do we want to make a motion to that or do we, or not? Sure. I'll make a motion. Oh, you were making a motion? I'll make a motion to have the uh, to have uh, the landscaping uh, verified by the uh, peer reviewer. Second. 
Motion second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any but, opposed? But just getting, I, I voted in, in, the, in favor of it, but getting back to the senior center and the everybody that were planted there, who picked up the uh, fact that they weren't the proper size? It wasn't an engineer. It was the neighbors, right? Neighbors and a board of selectmen. David Phil, even on, as a board of selectmen, knows when he did a walkthrough. So how can we be certain that this person inspecting them is not going to? Because it's not with the peer reviewer. It's not one of those people on the uh, that's that's with like is that the oh, same? Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because gotcha. we did the review. The start on gotcha. Friday. Okay. Anyway, the motion passed unanimously. Unanimous. Who seconded that one? Mike. I did. Okay. Okay. Uh. Let's see. Yeah, that's a third party review. Correct. Right. Uh, this one just came up today. I uh, got a call uh, from uh, a lady at 50 Lawrence Plain Road. And uh, she has a friend who usually spends the uh, summer traveling the country in his Airstream trailer and uh, wants to... Uh, Wants to just park somewhere this year. Not allowed in the town of Hadley. Okay. Well, I know we don't allow trailers as per se, but Tra trailers are only allowed by the riverbank by special permit from the ZBA. Okay. This harkens back to many, many, many years ago, uh, even before I was on the planning board, uh, Joe Weinzig Sr. Uh, son and his daughter uh, put a trailer next to their house. And mm -hmm. maybe he didn't want it there, but he, to his honesty, he said, this would look like hell if every town, every house in town had a trailer park next to it. So uh, that's where the trailer bylaw came into place. Okay. All right, I'll pass that along. And uh, I think this now gets into, uh, Jim, what you were talking about. Well, okay, I have one other thing. I did send around the uh, definition of dwelling for everyone to, uh, yeah. to have handy in case. That was what I understood a definition of a dwelling to be, exactly what you put in your writing, Bill. Right. So we pulled that out of the uh, definition section of the building code. So to the, if anyone's out there watching, um, the um, dwelling is defined as a single unit providing complete independent living facilities for one or more persons, including permanent provisions for living, sleeping, eating, cooking, and sanitation. Which means that um, if you don't have all five items in there, you do not have a dwelling. So, um, I mean, so, if you, so if you have a hotel room that has a, a, a kitchenette, that would be a dwelling. That, that might constitute a dwelling. Right. Uh, and that's, you think some of the, what, like, a home but a microwave and a, and, and a uh, refrigerator would not qualify as a, yeah. Probably not. Yeah. So it's it's um it's getting gray. You're getting that that would be gray, I guess. Um uh, so um it comes up in the context of whether a particular use is a dwelling or not. And unless it satisfies all those requirements, you know, basically you take the stove out of your accessory apartment and it's not a dwelling anymore not an apartment or so the building code says mark mark kind of raises a good point many years ago there was a motel that fell upon hard times so they did uh convert it to apartments uh and that was a controversial discussion at the time 
Um, so, um, anything else, Bill? I have uh, just one other thing I had said around the uh, the local the planning board scope of services from the prior years. And, and I don't know if anyone had a chance to look through them, but as we're the the ones the two that came up most consistently that we haven't quite gotten to over the last ten years are uh, planning board rules and regulations and um, adding some enhanced special permit language because what we're working off now is basically one paragraph in the ZBA section of the bylaw about special permits. So uh, I nominate those as a suggestion to uh, PVPC for the scope of work for the upcoming fiscal year. And I'll, uh, I'll pass that along. If I think we, I, I think last year we were trying to do some of that stuff, but then MS4 kind of got shoved into the mix and threw everything into a mess. Yeah, absolutely. And of course the marijuana stuff too. So I think those are two good topics to take up for the coming contract year. I think they had quite a, they have a reasonable amount of stuff done on that or started rather that we should be able to get some, both of those accomplished during the year. Okay. I'll, uh, any other comment on that? Uh, no, I think the difficulty was when they was initially presented, we wanted to make sure that it dovetails into the state requirements of special permits too. Yeah. Well, of course. Yes. Yeah. So I'll pass that along to Ken. Is that right. that'll help him? He was, he was hoping to have a uh, revised contract and scope of work to us for our next meeting. Okay. Um, okay, and that is sort of uh, well. That I guess comes down to uh, the, the great reopening, which I think you have. Yeah, I, before we get into that, because that may take a little discussion, let, let, let's Mr. Reedy, because he jumped in here. We will address him so he doesn't have to hang around. Tom, on the uh, when you send the plans around, you sent it around this morning. Yes. I'm going to be honest. I haven't even had a chance to look at it. Yes. So from, from now on, from going forward, and even today, please try to get them to us at least a couple of days ahead of time, because... I'm not ready to even look at I haven't looked at your plan, so I'm, I'm afraid I can't say yay or nay on it, okay? Not a problem at all. Understood. Okay. I mean, if the other members have looked at it and they're okay, they're ready to say something, then that's, that's okay with me. Um, I looked at it, and I got back to Tom with my thoughts on it. Um, it's a little unclear, still unclear, what the survey is showing. It's like, yeah. we, like there's a fourth page missing. <laughs> yeah, so I guess, and that's what I wanted to try to use this for, just to get some clarification so I can go back to Berkshire Design and say, listen, this is what is required. And so I don't know if fitting all of that onto one sheet of paper, which I think would be my preference, and showing that lot one uh, on North Maple Street, and then to show parcel two and parcel three, so-called combined, to be lot two, if we can do that all on on one sheet, I mean, since I haven't looked at the, just a second, Tom. Since I haven't even looked at the plan, is this the one that has the access on North Maple yes. and the right of way on Rocky Hill? Correct. Yeah, this okay, is Keith you. Rabine right in front of Elaine Manor. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank and you. To the north oh, and that, west of it. Have there have there been any any new insights on your side? No. So I, this is kind of a two step process, and the first piece is just to go through the ANR process because there's sufficient frontage on North Maple Street where we can get another building lot. Um, and so it was to first carve that off, to have that be just lot one, and then the balance of land to be considered lot two. And then what we would do is submit that special permit for lot two and then deal with all of the, the discussions that we had talked about. I, I talked to Keith and he said it's pretty flat out there. He wasn't concerned about uh, any slope coming off of Rocky Hill Road, but we still have to go through the iterations of, you know, whatever sort of design we can get to to make you guys feel comfortable with the safety of that um, access from Rocky Hill Road. So we we weren't dealing with that yet, understanding that, 
know, probably the next conversation is when is it going to be reopened? We know we had some time for that. So this was only for the ANR. Now, so you're going to going to break that into two lots? Yes. Both will have frontage on Rocky Hill Road? Both will have frontage on North Maple Street. On North Maple Street, I mean. Yes. Um, let me ask a simple question here that maybe makes things possibly easier for everybody. Is there any way you can make this a very small, does this qualify in any way for a very small subdivision and have both lots access off of uh, North Maple Street? I don't think so. So we run. What we do is run into the issue that we had last time um, with the, the the wetland, the stream crossing, the natural heritage, all of that stuff. So Keith is looking to site his um, home on that. It's it's a flattened, um, cleared out area closer to Rocky Hill Road than to North Maple. And so the only way to access that is actually to go across those stream crossings uh, from North Maple Street. Um, so we thought that this A and R. It's not. It's not that it's impossible. It's that it, it puts an economic burden on the owner. Correct. I, I I'm the type uh, to think nothing's impossible. Um, I could look to see exactly what this would require. I'm sure you're talking about discussions with the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, a conservation management permit, if they'll allow you to quote unquote take that land to put the the roadway in, the driveway in. So. Um, but I, I mean, no, I can't I'm, say it's I'm all for saving money if we can do it. If we, I want to protect businessmen and landowners in Hadley. So the other part of it that I mentioned last time is the Conservation Commission has um, takes a really negative view of crossing too much wetland, uh, changing too much wetland. So if there is another way to accomplish access, they, they would strongly favor it. Tom, so, the question, where, exactly where the two, are the two building lots on North Maple Street? Is the homestead, the original homestead, uh, part of one lot, and then the other lot is where the access road is presently located now that you would drive down there the access road is to the uh, former site of the the proposed site of the uh five college library correct is that a lot that's that we're one we're parcel we're we're the two parcels south of that right so two parcels yeah so if you know where alan yeah. st hilaire right in front of elaine manor so if you're looking at elaine manor the yeah. frontage for this the, all of this land we're talking about exists in front of Elaine Manor. What will happen oh. is that- Of that kind of unmowed field? Correct, yes. What does in front of mean? Um, it like the front lawn of Elaine Manor. Oh, front, okay, <laughs> that, that's, that's the word you know. You're not talking north or south, you're talking front, yeah. front, front. East, yeah, yeah, so east, east of, I guess. There, zoning Board of Appeals. Pardon me? Does anybody recall if this wetlands issue came up when Five Colleges Inc. wanted to put their building up there? Yes, yes. it was. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, it, it was, but that was a different parcel. Yeah. So I, it, Tom just sent that plan to uh, Jim and to me because we had both raised a lot of questions about it the last time it came in. And... Um, I still had a lot of questions about it because it does appear to show that the plan has a boundary line that takes off north off of the plan, which appears to encompass that library site as well. And I don't know if that's in play or not, but my concern was that the plan was not showing, it wasn't showing closure for, for property lines. In other words, the property lines went off the piece of paper. Right. It's not, um, not fully I was, defined. I wasn't sure what they were trying to show. So, yeah, and they've got a broken over three plans. And I, I know I've seen um, the great Randy Iser put that amount of acreage on one plan. So I'd imagine that it is certainly possible. Remember the Beatles song, The Long and Winding Road? <laughs> I don't. You well, don't. Oh, man. 
Don Lennon said it was Paul McCartney's last gasp. But <laughs> can you go around the wetlands? Just uh, well, no, first, and, and we'll, I mean, we'll show you graphically exactly what that would look like if we were to go off of North Maple Street and access the building lot. And I think, I mean, if you look at the GIS, you'll be able to see um, I, there's there's no way around it. So the uh, Bill or Jim, do you guys have a, a decent memory? The Elaine Manor was a uh, was allowed to be built through a zoning board of appeals, that, and yes. I thought that whole parcel was part of the ZBA ruling. Do you uh, recall, Bill? I don't. I have no recollection. I don't. Remember, I don't remember that. I remember this. I remember the ZBA giving them a special permit to put the nursing home up. However, I don't remember the detail of what the plot looked like. I don't remember, and there was a, a lot of controversy about extending the uh, the the business zone in effect uh, up uh, North Maple Street, and that was creating a lot of consternation with the neighbors. And so that's plus. Then they have to come back and flip the building because the uh, the ability to build on it was, uh, I guess, clay base, and they couldn't, so they had to flip the building around and preload it, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, uh, Tom Reedy, that's some homework for you too. <laughs> it's on my list. Okay. So then maybe oh. Bill and Jim next steps. Oh, oh, Tom Reedy. I, may have been, I probably was mistaken because the way I interpreted the, uh, the, the plan that was originally given to us that the lot exit on uh, Rocky Hill Road was going to the north part of the parcel, but it, it appears now that it's going through the south part of that parcel. So probably the best way just to avoid any confusion, um, why don't I spend some time uh, with the surveyor to, to get something that I think is more acceptable, to send it to Bill and Jim to get their blessing and then to come back in a couple of weeks and just to present that. And as part of it, what I can also do, Joe, is to identify exactly where the future development would be, house lot on North Maple, house lot um, further off. Well, just so I think we're, so we're all talking about the same thing. I, I think you should send a copy to Dr. Zagrognik, too. He's the guy that's asking most of the questions. Send, send it to Bill. Maybe, maybe Bill Mark Dunn, to too, because he's a member of the board. And, uh, well, Bill will send me it to Right. I mean, we got cut out once in the past. Well, <laughs> yeah. I I decided it was not ready for prime time, right. so I, that's why I didn't forward it at this point. Appreciate it. Okay. Perfect. So I'll work on that, and I will get it to whoever you'd like me to get it to. I, I wasn't trying to cut anybody I out, uh, no, Mr. But, no. Just trying to get the blessing before I bring it to everybody. Okay. I guess I don't understand what you mean by blessing. Uh, so that it was sufficient for everybody's review. You know, the first, so when I sent it to Bill a couple how of weeks they, ago. Not, not to be argumentative, but how could they possibly know if it was sufficient for my review versus Joe Zagranik's review? I don't know. I'm just. <laughs> Understood. Thank you. The, uh, anything, anything else, Tom? No, that's it. Good seeing everybody. <laughs> See in a couple of weeks. All right. Per my email I sent out to everybody um, late last week about the uh, restaurants wanting to reopen. Um, David Nixon, I guess, had a meeting with the Amherst Chamber of Commerce, and I'm not sure who else. And they were discussing that when restaurants reopen in the area, both Amherst Hadley and probably other areas, but at least in those two towns, that they were going to be limited to 40% seating existing seating capacity. And a, and a number of the restaurants, I believe, would like to put outside some outdoor seating to accommodate, obviously, more seating. And question came up is what would be required to, if anything, to approve that? 
And Amherst was thinking, well, maybe site plan approval and yada, and some other things. David Nixon asked me that. And I said, well, as far as I'm concerned, I'll put it out to the planning board at our next meeting. But my opinion is that these restaurants have been hurting pretty badly financially for months now. And if we required some kind of a specialized site plan approval, you're looking at another six weeks before they could do anything. Exactly. My, my two cents is that if they put up outside seating, as long as they don't exceed the capacity of the original restaurant, whatever that might be, then put it into the purview. And this is some talk to Joe about this the other day. And he says, well, let the building inspector zoning enforcement officer make that ultimate decision. This is uh, two things. This is temporary until this virus stuff is gone. And I'm not talking about what a, when a governor lifts whatever is going to be in a couple of weeks or three weeks, because that's going to be the 40% for who knows how long. I'm talking about when things return probably to a normal normal. Hopefully that'll be some time, but it may not be for months. And in the meantime, let them have outdoor seating, not to exceed the original capacity of the restaurant. And with exception of very few restaurants, um, I don't think parking is going to be a problem. Yeah, I was going to say the only concern I would have would be if they covered their entire parking lot and now they don't have parking for the people. There is no doubt they will be covering part of their parking lots to do this. Part, but not all of it. So as long right. as they still have. And, and that's something like, you know, places like, uh, I think one of the ones that said they want to put up some outside tent is roads is uh, Texas State House. Well, to be honest with you, a lot of their cars park in a home in the uh, Lowe's lot right now. Right. And that lot is big enough to accommodate things. Same thing with anybody near the malls. They're going to figure a way around. It's going to be, and even Staples. I mean, Staples. That lot is about, they got about five, six times the parking they need for that little building there. And yeah, when they're busy, they've got a waiting line. Well, they're, they're, a lot of these places, you know, Stables has no place else to park the car. They can't park them on Route 9. They'll get they'll get destroyed. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the only ones I can see being a bit of an issue might be Esalon. And I, I thought about that, too. But they could use the parking area that they've been t talking about. Yeah, I mean, th they know the scrutiny they're under. And, you know, I guess we're just going to have to deal with these on a one on a case-by-case -case basis if something comes up. Because in the meantime we would look pretty nasty if we started giving them special requirements. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think you have a blanket dispensation on this. And, uh, you make the motion. So there was a another... I mean, as long as the parking isn't unsafe. I mean, we still right. have to protect the safety, you know. Yes, and, and th that'll be up to the building inspector, zoning enforcement officer, and obviously if the police need to get involved. Yeah, and the fire department as well, because that's going to be a factor. So um, the... Um, I'm not worried about parking all that much because if they can only open at 40% capacity, there's going to be that much less need for parking. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think many people are going to be dining in parking lots, quite frankly. Yeah. yeah. The, um, well, it's summer, so. Uh, uh, if you're serving cold drinks, yeah. For the next, for the next, without this, you know, a few, you may have a few months of it, but I mean, once this fall weather comes along, it's not going to be the most place, the most comfortable place to be eaten. So this came up during this development uh, coordinating committee meeting I was at today. The fire chief was there and he's concerned about it in, because he doesn't want people, he doesn't want you setting up a tent in uh, a fire lane or blocking a standpipe or uh, uh, at the like. So that's a, more of a concern. <clears throat> I did send around uh, <clears throat> I forwarded something from David Nixon, um, COVID-19 order number 35, which uh, just issued, I think. Uh, yeah, it issued at uh, 220 yesterday. And among other things, it, um, it does say uh, that notwithstanding the provisions of chapter 40A of the general laws, 
a city or town may approve requests for expansion of outdoor table service um, as described below. Uh, the select board shall establish the process. Such process need not comply with the notice and publications provisions of Chapter 40A. Um, so I, I think that also means that we're on, on solid ground now just saying, no, we're not going to amend 20 site plans okay. for an order that will expire by its own weight on November 1. Okay. So I think they've taken it outside of zoning, so we can we can just stand back. Now, if they really love how this is all working out for them and they want to come back and make it permanent, then we're reopening site plan approval. Absolutely. Right. Right. This is just temporary. Do we? We, did, we don't even really need a motion on this, then, do we? Well, no. I just want to make one comment. It's either good news or bad news, depending on how you interpret it, but. Uh, the town of Amherst is given the authority to their zoning enforcement officer or building inspector. Uh oh. Uh oh. So, but uh, <laughs> that but, mean we're in agreement with them? From the point of view of uh, legal ramification, Bill just cleared it up uh, pretty much. But uh, Amherst also has Koppelman and Page as their uh, legal legal. Okay. So what was that bill? What that was? What one of the, what chapter number was that that you just quoted? Well, that was uh, the it, it's executive order, COVID nineteen order number thirty five, which I sent to everyone earlier. Okay, I think I just got it today. But one of the provisions of that executive order suspends, or exempts, uh, Expansion of outdoor table service is exempted from 40A from the zoning okay. law. I think the big problem is not going to be arise, arising with food. It's going to be more drinking, and that is where the select board yeah. has the authority. Right. If you're yep. drinking and wandering away from your table into the street or something, then, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, that'll. That's the police and board of selectmen and board of health. Okay. So it, it's going to be the the board of health will have a say in this because they're changing their <laughs> service area. Uh, fire department will have a say. Uh, select board will have a say. Um, I don't, I don't think, I don't think our voice is needed. Good. That's wonderful. We can continue with our regular stuff. Okay. So one other thing that came up and I'll let Mark mention this too, um, oh. about, um, there apparently is the, American Institute of Architects, Massachusetts chapter is uh, uh, they're promoting pushing to have good. You go, you explain it, Mark. They're they're sending out surveys and they're promoting to the state to um, advocate for and push forward with uh, virtual public hearings. Um, you know, I think we've got some hearing some background there. Who's got the Who's got the background voice going on? That would be TV Five. Okay. Uh, okay. Happy media. Uh, excuse me. Okay. Um, yeah. So they're they're advocating on behalf of uh, architects practicing whose clients can't get their hearings. Um, and get their keep their projects going forward. So they're advocating on behalf of uh, the state accepting or promoting um, virtual public hearings, which is something we keep pushing things off. And I think we've started to do a couple if they're non-controversial. Um, so uh, that was just an interesting email I thought I, I would share. Some of the non-controversial ones we probably could conduct 
Um, maybe like this one off of uh, High Meadow that I don't think that's going to be controversial. But to continue the one on uh, Grand Oak Farm and the one for the old Nibala Garage, those are controversial. There's, there's lots of people that want to have input on that. And to try to do that virtually, I just don't see how that's going to be orderly conducting, conducted. Mark, a question to Mark. Was that the same email that was basically uh, trying to get the number of uh, towns, committees that, that were using the virtual meetings? Because it sounded like not not everybody is on board with this. It was a survey and they were saying that uh, just over half of, uh, I believe it's what, 351 municipalities in the state. They were saying just over half are are using virtual um, pu public hearings and the others aren't. So they're trying to get it more widespread or or, or get the state to accept it so that the towns feel like they have some place to hang their hat. I don't have an opinion one way or another. I just thought it was interesting that, you know, my professional uh, advocacy you know, organization is advocating. Well, just to add one example, uh, I had to mute uh, Hadley Media mm -hmm. because that was where the background noise was coming from. Um, which I, I'm not sure he can unmute himself or not, but, um, let me see. No. Okay. Uh, I just tried to unmute him and it didn't work. So, um, yeah, obviously I, I, I can see a crunch coming with a lot of extra work for us. Um, if we have to stuff too many things in, in the 45 days after all of this passes um then the thing is that even you know it's hard you're hard pressed to say what's controversial and what's not controversial because i have received phone calls about the uh, the high meadow property right. and why are they building the addition without a special permit and they're doing it because it ties into that definition of dwelling we talked about they have a permit to expand the existing house they just cannot put in, they, they cannot get a plumbing permit to, uh, or an electrical permit to put in a stove uh, until they get a special permit. But well, it wasn't determined though that the septic system there could handle that, could it, could, that, was it? Uh, that's on sewer, isn't it? Which one? I think uh, it's high, high metal. High, yes. Uh, I, 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 yes, it goes. We don't have the report back from the uh, um, Board of Health on High Meadow on a septic system. Well, yeah, they are sewer. I think High Meadow's on sewer, aren't they? I think I think High Meadow and I'm up on Highland. I think we're all on sewer up on this hill. That's I believe, right. I believe High Meadow might be on sewer. Across Rocky Hill Road, and the question, does it go down... Uh, straight or does it take a right? I, I believe I asked them that question. I'm, I am pretty sure that they said they were on sewer. They don't have septic up there. Okay. Well, we'll find out. Yes. So I would just, um, just to go out and do a little devil's advocate on the controversial. Let's say I had a controversial hearing, but I wanted to go forward with it and we felt it couldn't be heard properly. If I were to uh, complain about that, I guess one argument I could have would be uh, there are ways of doing it orderly. We had, um, I was part on uh, last Thursday, the chancellor of the university had a Zoom for my entire union. And, it, and I think someone said there were you know, over a thousand people on it. And what they do is you, they control it. You're, you don't have a mic, you're silenced, but you, there's a chat. You can write questions and submit the questions. And then um, someone would have to moderate and say, all right, we have a question from, and then you could turn that person's mic on. So there is a way to do it. It's not gonna be easy. 
it's not something we've done. Um, but just devil's advocate, I'd, you know, if someone does complain, I think there probably is a way to do it. But we haven't, you know, we're not a paid board. We don't have the time and the administrators to sit there and tell us how to do it. Well, right now, as far as playing devil's advocate, the governor has said we do not have to conduct public hearings. Right. So I'm, yeah. I'm saying if the AIA succeeds, Unless and until that changes, yeah. um, you know, hopefully we'll see in the next few months. Hopefully that'll open up a little bit. Well, time will tell. Oh, well, we could always set up a tent and hold them outside in the summertime. I've wondered about holding them outside. That might be an option. We'd have as, long to as, it's, as long as it's handicap accessible. Sunderland and South Deerfield are holding their town meetings outside. Hadley is says it has the, the meeting on Saturday. The, the Hadley has two tentative dates for the town meeting: June eighteenth and twentieth. The eighteenth is at night. The twentieth is in the morning, and at the twentieth on a Saturday is tentatively an outside meeting. So, so at one time Hadley Media had um, uh, clip-on remote mics for us. I remember that. Which I think is what if we're going to go outside, you, then you get into noise questions. Uh, if we're with Zoom, uh, it, we're, we're assuming everybody has right technical access. Right. And you could probably uh, you could probably make that assumption uh, for UMass technical staff. Um, I, I won't make that assumption for you know, everybody in Hadley. Right. Now that that's the one thing is what if they don't have a, a computer? Now right. you are being discriminatory. Right. And we might have a protocol that says if someone if someone who is interested, truly interested, says that I don't have technical access, then okay, then we're not doing it. Right. But we wouldn't actually know that until we advertised it and opened it and saw, found out if we had any complaints. I would be surprised if the governor says you have to have Zoom public hearings for the simple reason that he could be accidentally being discrimination. Well, if 50% of the communities are not doing it, that's a huge leap. Yeah. So anyway. We'll wait and see. The, uh, I had one other thing I was going to ask. Talk FEMA, about. FEMA, Matt, or is it still on the same subject? No, no, you can, you can bring it up, Joe. Well, I would like to see the map. And uh, before we could have any real discussion, is it the same? Has it been corrected? where, for example, Bill Dwyer had some points. Uh, have those areas been corrected or is it just kind of, or expanded? When you and I, Jim, attended that meeting at the uh, library uh, in Amherst, uh, it looked dramatically like they were going to increase the ability or, or increase the floodplain. And to me, it was a kind of a financial grab because FEMA is running out of money. So if they put a wider scope of land into the floodplain, that means they'll have more money that people will have to pay for flood insurance. So I think we have to look at it more closely and make the, uh, the citizens aware if all of a sudden their property is in the floodplain and it wasn't before. I don't think they've come out with maps yet they came out with a report of the procedure they went through which i think i forwarded to everyone a while back but it was you know it was a 150 page uh pdf with um just the comments they had received as they went uh, went out and about I think David Nixon says they've ex they were 
going to be, now they've extended the deadline, but I'm not 100% sure of that because of various reasons. Well, the town, you're right, Jim, there was a deadline and the town was almost supposed to adopt it at the upcoming town meeting. And has it been extended? That was the question. Oh, and, there, was, there was something that went around. Yeah. Um, there was an email that went around from Copelman and Page about, you have to update, you have to update. And then they sent a follow-up around later the same day saying, turns out those are just some towns uh, in Barnstable County. Yeah, those were on the Cape, right. Okay. That's better. I didn't want to have anything rushed without having a thorough study. It, 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 it wasn't, uh, the, the deadline for the regular map, I believe, was out over a year for when that email went out. Okay. If not longer. And that was before the, the COVID came, was hit. All right. Gotcha. But you're right. We're going to keep it in our, we can't let it, we can't let it get away on us. We got to keep up on it. Make sure we follow it. Yeah, because the rules and regulations have been, well, particularly with trailers parked along the flood way. Uh, if we continue to ignore them, uh, we as a town continue to ignore them, and there was some catastrophic flood that came up all of a sudden, and there are people are seeking restitution for their trailers that went down the river. They can say, well, you're violating the FEMA regulations and therefore the town is not uh, eligible for any FEMA aid. So we have to be cautious of that as well. Okay. Anything else? No, uh, I know oh. Bill sent out an amended budget and, and everybody's budget was cut, but was, was the pencil that we put to our budget Pretty sharp, or was there some leeway? Well, they 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 cut the uh, full time planner, right? And they cut our they basically they level funded our budget. All right. Okay, that's what I thought. Well, question: Mike sent around an email about somebody at the end of his new senior uh, senior development um, complaining, if you would, about the lights from the motel. Which motel was that, Mike? That would be the one. The Knights, the Knights yeah. Hotel, the Knights Hotel, right, right by the where it used to be in front of Stan, yeah, right to, uh, the uh, Stan Vegetable Place. It's where the I new thing is. I went over there last night and took a view, a look at it, and it's uh, it's as if there was a sun shining in the parking lot. And uh, I chatted with the uh, hotel owner briefly, and I guess he's contacted. Uh, uh, Eversource, and they're very busy, but uh, I think something can be done. But I, th acting on my own, I went over there. Uh, but I told him it might be nice if he could come by the planning board so we could see it, the new lighting scheme because it's it's very very bright. I so drove through there last night a couple of times. I went to the motel into their parking lot trying to figure out. There's two lights that two lights on the mo. There's four lights in the motel. Yeah. <laughs> Two lights that really shine on the back of these houses. Now, yeah. the motel was there first. They're built against the business area, stuff like that. And yeah. you know, it's really. I think the, guys, the guy wants to be reasonable. It's not a planning board issue unless they come in for site plan approval. Yeah. However, um, it would be nice if we could address this amicably without getting anybody super upset and everything else. And I think what Mike has done is taking as a first step may indeed help address the issue without really getting, you know, a I'm lot of me. grief involved. Yeah. Just for my clarification, have there been any zoning bylaws enacted after the fact that have been applied retroactively? No. Zoning bylaws do not apply after the fact. I didn't, I didn't think so. <laughs> so I would, I pretty, I'm sure the Knights Inn went through site plan approval. Uh, they did. I really, I, I'm having trouble remembering, but it must have been since I was on the board. 
Yes. Must, I must have a decision on it. We, we, we have a decision on it somewhere. Yeah. We probably, well, depending on the vintage of the decision, we have a standard clause about no bright light off the property. Right. Um, although we discovered in one project, the, uh, one of the, the, one of the hotels, uh, it was the Holiday Inn Express. Yes. They put in uh, very, uh, very fancy gaslight type uh, lighting fixtures, and the neighbors started complaining because technically there was no not no excessive brightness, but because you could see the bulb in the dark, there was no shielding. There was no shielding. It looked bright. Yeah, uh, I don't know how that played out. I'm going to assume that the nights in probably is in compliance with site plan approval, but if they have added lights since their site plan approval, that might be actionable. The guy that brought it up was Rain, Wayne Abercrombie. Apparently he has a connection to somebody on the board because Dr. Zagrodin put it braces on his kid's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, if, we, if we get a copy of that site plan approval in the files and just take a look at it, it'd be great. Well, when we can get back into town hall. Yeah. It would be in our, um, I, I'm pretty sure I, I don't have an electronic copy of it. So we'd be looking yeah. for a paper copy from whenever. This is an old one for sure. This is, uh, this is, this goes back to when, what's his name still on the property? I told him, I said, I'm not sure how lighting was addressed back then, if at all, but Bill, from what Bill rec recollects or, or knows that, it was addressed, so that would be helpful, I guess. So, yeah, I can't be sure because at some point, the the first decisions I wrote up were pretty simple, one or two pages, and then yeah. um, as people started, well, you didn't say I couldn't do that. I then started putting in more, and thou shalt not this, and thou shalt not that. Right. Uh, and even then, I can't write, I can't put in everything that people shouldn't do. They're supposed to read the zoning bylaw. I would venture that some of these lights that are shining northwards were put in after the uh, um, campus pizza burned down. Yeah. Yep. Well, the controversy. The, the big light is basically, it looks like it's lighting up a garbage bin, okay? It, it, it's, I, I was. At first, I said, well, you know, there, this, but when I, when I drove it to the end of the end of the senior, what is the name of the street, Mike? East Commons. East Commons Drive. East Commons Drive? Yeah. When I drove to the end of that last night, I, and I, and you could look, of course, I didn't go into anybody's property. I just, I just um, parked and looked between the two houses at the end. It is fairly bright in their backyards, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah, definitely coming in through his bedroom window. And I, he said he could put blackout shades or whatever, but he doesn't want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me just take a, 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 I don't know what the, uh, was it always a night's in? No. Was it the Norwatok in or something? Nor Norwatok in, it used to be Norwatok in. Yeah. When it was originally put in, I believe. Okay. So, so that would have changed what in the last 15 years? Oh, yeah. The, what was the, he owned, he bought the old Walters building. He built this motel. What was it? He lived on East Street. Then he moved to Florida. Remember his name, Joe? I don't recall, but I recall more of the country. Tony? First what name was is Tony. Parking. Remember the shared parking? Yeah. Tony? Pateras. Tony Pateras, yes. Yes. Yeah. But just by, by way of general information, this is a good example if when people want to put uh, any kind of residential, whether it's a complex or anything near business, it's going to be increasingly difficult for business because all of a sudden the new neighbors uh, feel they have a right to, to do anything with the neighboring property. Well, and that's not, that's not necessarily true. They, the guy said, he said he came over here, he knew what he was getting into, and he's a big boy, but if something can be done, he'd be happy, you know? 
Okay, that's yeah. that's a good way of putting it. But there's uh, whether it's the Lowe's controversy that was held up by somebody buying the adjacent house next to it, whether it's the uh, the apartment complex that was going in and Amherst, the parking lot in Hadley, and the but people were petitioning uh, to reduce the size of it. So, uh, All right. Just an aside. Sure. But the guy wasn't whining. You know, I didn't want to seem like he was whining about it. He's a big boy, but it, it's clearly uh, affected the property at night. Arbor Vites. Um, they'd have to be very, very tall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These lights are probably, I guess they're 20, 25 feet in the air. Mm. And they, they're, they're, they're the square, like the floodlight, the high sodiums. Yeah. And they're aimed, they see, appear to be aimed directly north. Mm. Yeah. Because he's got one light, the northernmost light is like a shoebox light aimed straight down. You can't even see that one from the back of their house. And that's he the said point. he could take two down, but it, it's just a question of Eversource getting around to it. Yeah. But you're right, they, I think they're a lot higher than any lights that we might approve today, today, taller, I mean. So are they on the building or on poles? They're on, on like poles. The on poles. So I'm just taking a look at uh, Mass Land Records to see if they recorded our uh, decision and I don't see that they did. Yeah. But we'll, we can uh, we can take a look. It it would be in the in the files in I, I don't even remember when it happened. So, Bill, if it hasn't been recorded, what legal bearing does it have? Uh, it, it may not matter because we didn't change it to a special permit until, which does require uh, recording. It was just site plan okay. approval before that. So, uh, some people recorded them, some didn't. We didn't require it. Site plan review. But I have nothing else. Just just for the record, they're trying to sell the parcel. So they're trying to do something with where the uh, campus motel burned, campus pizza burned down. That that there, that's all one parcel. They can't subdivide it. It's a condo. Yeah. So, yeah, they had what they did was the ho the motel is a condo unit, and each individual shop was a unit. The way the site plan was approved for parking and otherwise, they need the they need there's not I don't think there's enough frontage for two separate parcels there. And even if there is, there's not enough land the way they've got it built for two separate parcels. So that's all one parcel that'll be shared parking. So when something eventually does happen to the other parcel that burned down, they'll be back in and we should be able to address this if it hasn't been addressed by them. So me in the meantime, I'll try. Like I said, it's be good to try to get it done amicably. Anyways, mm -hmm. I Bill has nothing else. I have nothing else. Anybody have anything? Negative. Motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Me meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John. <laughs>